the shame Remove all the pain Black it out like a troll on your timeline The past is what made you who you are today Embrace it, let it go like an exhale All right, good evening, everybody. We are back. Welcome to the Muzzlers Off podcast, where I am your host, Nakia Monet. And we have two special guests with us tonight. We have Justin Jackson. Hello, how are you? Good. And we have Elizabeth Roberts. Hi, how are you? I am well. So I want to welcome y'all to the Muzzlers Off podcast. I want to Actually, I want to thank y'all for even coming on um, tonight. Uh, we are going to be discussing Justin's book, um, A Father's Plight. And I've never done it with the actual publisher. So I'm actually really excited that you're on here, Elizabeth. Oh, because, thank you. Yeah, because I think that it's important to hear from the writer side and also the publisher side, right? Yes, because a lot of the time the publisher, y'all push the vision of the writer. Uh -huh. where, where you want to go, what you want to do, right? how, how far yeah. you want to take this. Yeah. So I think it's going to be real dope, real interesting um, in order to allow people to hear both sides of it. Right. Because a lot of people always say, I want to write a book, but they don't understand that there's a lot more to it than just writing a book. Right. Yes. Yes, yes, it, yes. Is. And, it is. And I'm definitely going <laughs> to really um, touch on, I definitely want to touch on that, um, but I'll wait until we get there. No problem. So Justin, how you feeling? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for having uh, having us on. Thank you, man. <laughs> Thank you. You are welcome. You are welcome. You know, one, one of the things that I love is the fact that when you can really meet with people and just connect with them on a different level, especially artistically and creatively, right? Because mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? One author to another, one editor to another. You know, it's it's a it's a it's a different realm that you walk into when you are literally sitting up here and you're creating and you're creating. And the truth of the matter is, is that when you put your life into words, it's like you're reliving that life. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, can, I, I can yeah, attest did to you, that hundred percent. How did you, you feel know? right in a father's plight then? How did you feel? I'm gonna tell you, it took me three years to finish this book. It took me three years to finish it because you know, like I, I always knew that I wanted to write. And when I when it became clear what I wanted to write about, you know, it was definitely something that that was a part of my life, like fatherhood, me not having a father. And then coming a father, going through some of the things that I went through and still go through, you know, as a father. You know, it, it comes, you know, fatherhood is not it's not a walk in the park. Being a parent is not a walk in the park. You know, so the journey of writing this book was definitely it was definitely an emotional one. You know, like I said, mm -hmm. it took me three years to finish it because, you know, writing some points of this book, you know, at times where, you know, I'd be writing alone, you know, and um, I would have to take a step away because we live in some of those moments. It was just like, like, wow, you know what I mean? So it was emotional, but it was also therapeutic. It was very therapeutic to, uh, to, to write this and just get it off, you know what I mean? Because not only did I write it, you know, for myself, you know, I know that there are other people that, you know, go through things, you know, like real things, you know, um, that this book discusses, you know, so you never know how, 
you know, you telling your story, you know, like people always say, oh, I know what you're talking about because I, I just went through that. You know, like you never know how your story can can inspire somebody and give somebody the strength to carry on, you know, or to just do something that they, they've always wanted to do but couldn't. Mm -hmm. But after reading, after reading, you know, the experiences that somebody else, you know, uh, went through or see somebody go through something, it'd be like, you know, they're like, you know, I can do this. You know, let, let me go, you know, throw my hat in this ring and I'm, I'm going to do it. I like that. So tell the people a high level synopsis of a father's plight. A high level synopsis. High level, because okay. they got they got to buy it. Oh, well, I mean, like I said, it's it's a it's a personal journey. It's a it's a it's a, a story of um, adversity. Mm -hmm. It's a story of perseverance, and it's the story of redemption. It's a different type of redemption story. You know, um, I really, let me see how, how much more high level I could get with this, but uh, without giving the book away, but um, it's definitely, it's real, it's, it's, it's real. You know, it's definitely real. It's like stuff that people go through every day, you know, mm -hmm. like that you wouldn't, you know, like you wouldn't just look at something and see like, you know, like, damn, they went through that, you know, like, but it's real. Like a lot of people go through these type of things, you know, um, I found it. I'm trying to come up with something without giving the book away, but a lot of it's just real. And I know I know a lot of people can uh, can relate. I know a lot of people relate to this this book. You know, I know a lot of so, people. Can relate. So let's help them. Let's see what we could do to help them get into it without without giving it away, right? So okay. when you think of a father's plight outside of the book, let's say you being an individual person, you hear this phrase, this, this, this title, this, this caption, a father's plight. What does that speak to you? Forget the fact that you wrote it. What does that speak okay. to you? Okay. To me, mm -hmm. what that speaks to me as a man, you mm -hmm. know, uh, as a man, I just, I feel like, you know, sometimes we, we get the short end of the stick. We do. We definitely get the short end of the stick and something happened. Like everybody always gets, Oh, like he's a deadbeat dad. He's this, he's that, you know, a lot of fathers out here want to be in their children's lives. You understand? But mm -hmm. for circumstances that are out of control, things happen, you know, and we have to adapt because no matter how hard we try to fight, you know, we get laughed out of court, you know, when there are real situations going on. Mm -hmm. You know, there are real situations that, that are happening. We get laughed out of court, you know, uh, um, and it's just kind of like, like we get like, oh, well, suck it up. You know, like, you know, my love is no different or no less than, than a mother's love. You understand? So I don't know if, if that answers the question or it does because it's gonna help it's gonna help the people to understand, especially men. I think that it's important that men understand that what you're actually given, um, what you're actually given a visual to is the plight that a father has to go through to be a father. Exactly. In, it's like in a, general, sometimes in, it's a mission. Right. In general terms, you're literally given like what are the difficulties? What are the unfortunate? Like when you think of a plight, you think of something that is difficult. You think of something that is like unfortunate, something that, you know, it's a bit, it's like a bit tragic, right? So when you think of In like ways, a father, yes, it can be. Yeah. You know, so because when you it, think it of can like, be, but it, I think it, I think it depends on, on the person, you know, like whether it can be tragic or, or you know, like uh, perilous or, or whatever you want to say, you know, it depends on a person because not everybody adapts or adjusts to adversity the same way. Some people just say, you know what, whatever, you know, like in this, this book, yeah, and this book is actually, you know, a part of my, 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 uh, my journey, you know, you know, I, I went through things and it, you know, I went through things, you know, from early on when my father left and then becoming a father, I went through things and I say, you know what, you know, this is something that we need to, to discuss, you know, uh, a little further, you know, we need to start talking about the things we go through as men instead of internalizing all of it, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? We need to, to start letting it out, you know? And like I said, I've always had this dream to write, so why not? This is the perfect topic because this is something that's stuck with me my whole life. So you think that as a man, it's important to basically give a voice to a, to, to, to a man's pain as opposed to internalizing the pain, but let's give a voice to it and let's deal with it. Absolutely, I think that's very important. You know, I think, mm -hmm. I think it's very important. I think it's very important. You know, there are men out here that are killing themselves, you know, for various reasons, but there are men that, that are that are killing themselves because they don't know how to handle 
or what to do to be with their children. That's a real thing. You know, like I've, I've read pl plenty of articles where men have killed themselves because of what they've been through in, in regards to this type of stuff. Right. And, 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 and <sighs> that's a harsh reality, right? Like, um, I it think is. maybe, a, I think maybe a week ago, um, one of my friends had reached out to me because one of her friends was going through something very similar. Um, the woman was withholding the child from him, would not allow him to see the child at all. And the person was so distraught that the person just outside of not necessarily taking his own life, but wishing that God would remove the child so that he wouldn't have to face not being able to see the child. Right. And I think that I think that this is an important message for women as well, Absolutely. because um, when you become angry and that anger turns into bitterness and you begin mm -hmm. to withhold the child from the father, it becomes um, a dangerous thing. It becomes a very dangerous thing, you know, and it 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 becomes a very toxic thing for the child, right? Mm -hmm. um, because the truth of the matter is children suffer in, in that, in that way as well. And mm -hmm. that, that's one of, I really, I and they're really, the, they're, um, the, they're the biggest ones that suffer. They're the biggest ones that suffer because they don't understand, you know, they don't understand. They don't have the full understanding of what's really happening. Like we, you know, they really have like real life experiences like that, you know? So I really enjoyed truth be told. I mean, I'm, I'm not a mother. I don't have any children. Um, I have, a niece and three nephews. Um, I really enjoyed reading this because it lets you into the heart of a father that truly just wants to be a father, right? Absolutely. And a lot of the, and, and your situation is a little different. You know what I'm saying? Um, the circumstances surrounding it, it, it wasn't as if you guys had you know, such a, you know how, you know, you have a tumultuous breakup and then everybody turns bitter. <laughs> Although the breakup wasn't necessarily good, but, mm -hmm. you know, the typical story is, oh, he cheated on me. So I left him. Right. And now, mm -hmm. and no, he can't see his child. Oh, he left this house. So no, he can't see his child. This, that, and the third. It, it wasn't, it wasn't really like that. The, the way in which, you know, your story transitioned, you wouldn't have even thought that that would have been the transition. You know what I'm yeah, saying? It was, like, it was it was definitely a different type of transition. Yeah, like <laughs> you wouldn't have thought that that was. I was like, oh, I didn't think that. I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't even going there with that, you know. And yeah. but that's good because everybody's story is not the same. Although you suffer similar consequences, right? Because the Absolutely. the ultimate is, I still want to be a father to my child, and that's I had it. to come. I had to come to terms with a decision that I was not okay with, right? Then on yeah, top of that, right, you like, nah, I wasn't okay with it, right? Okay. Then on top of that, when you, cause when you read it, it's like, it's like, I, I can, I can hear, I wanna be a father to my child, but then the other side of it is, okay, but I'm yet still a man. And then the other side of it is, and I'm yet still a working man. So it's like, you're dealing with, a lot of different things that are going on personally, right? Mm -hmm. Also internally, also mm -hmm. externally on the job, you're facing different challenges that you're realizing like certain things that you learned while you were, you know, in, in, in training ain't what's really going on out here in these streets. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How, how this began. And, and when I, I, I ain't gonna hold you. When I read that part, I was like, I knew it. I knew they had a quota that they didn't want to tell me about. I knew it. Right. And so I was sitting there, I was like, hmm, see what I'm saying? Don't be coming mm -hmm. at me at, at the good um end of your month, in the middle, and at the beginning. Don't hit me. Don't don't uh, -uh. That's why that's why I'm happy I'm in quarantine now. I wonder how they're doing now while people quarantine and can't go nowhere. <laughs> anyway, just saying. I'm, I'm like, listen, that part, but also. Then the part in there where you then had to face a young man that was, you could resonate with him. And every yes. day, like we face people that we literally can feel their pain and we could feel their spirit and we could understand. And it was like the other person couldn't understand. How did that, how did you feel in that instance? It was, it was crazy. It was like, I saw my, I saw, you know, in that person. 
you know, like, uh, but, you know, like I said, um, you know, I felt like I was like kind of like not lucky, but blessed to understand like, you know, certain things, how many other people aren't that blessed to know like what's real, you know, what's really, you know, like real, you know, but um, it, it was definitely like a, one of those look in the mirror type, type moments, you know, like where I was like, man, like, you know, wherever, whatever I can do to try to, you know, help, like it just didn't, you know, again, it fell on deaf ears. Mm-hmm. But how often does a father's cry fall on deaf ears? Cause that when I read that part and then I'm, I'm listening to your story, that's what I'm hearing. How often yeah. does a father's cry fall on deaf ears? And let's and let's see if you can speak about that in a, in a little bit of detail outside of your own personal story. But what you experienced was deaf ears. Yeah. How does that feel you. to experience deaf ears and to keep experiencing deaf ears and to keep <laughs> going through the same thing and not not getting it, what it, you're asking for? It depress is depressing, you know, because it's like. You're, you're sitting here and you know what's really real, like what's really going on, you know what I mean? And it's like, you know, you're you're talking to people and it's just like, you know, talking to a brawl. So it's depressing because, you know, as much as I tried to fight, you know, it it just became very depressing. Like it, it just came like, like, like I just get the white flag, like, you know, okay, I'm gonna have to accept the fact that I'm gonna have to allow this to happen. You know, even though I didn't agree with it, you know, but it hurt, you know? <laughs> It hurt, and that's just being real. Like it hurt. It definitely did hurt. And as a man, like, like how I, this is how I think of things sometimes. Like as a man, right? Like a man is set here to protect, to provide. You know what I'm saying? To is like the backbone and the strength of a family. And how does it feel when you're not? You're not even given the opportunity to be that. Again, it just feels like like you like that, that like what you just said, the backbone and everything else. It just feels like it uh it's just like stripped away, like the rug being pulled from under you. You know, it's like, you know, like what the hell am I doing? Then? You know, like what am I doing? And I think it's, it's by design. Like honestly, man, I think it's by design. You no, know, I think you know, because a lot of people, like I said, they don't they don't have that fight, you know. Like me personally, I'm not gonna, I'm not just gonna concede like that. So yeah, you might, you might get me this way, but I'm gonna figure out another way. But how many people are willing to really figure out another way? How many people are willing to take three years, you know, to tell a, to tell a story, you know, to, to, to help empower other people? Because this book, like I said, yeah, it's geared towards fathers, but there's a lot of women out there that can relate to this too. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, I think it's by design, you know, because, and this is why I feel like education Educating yourself is so important, you know, to men. Just educate yourself, you know, about your rights as men and fathers, because even when you do go to court, like the first, like anytime anybody has to go to court, the first thing they say is, oh, I need a lawyer. I want a lawyer. I'm going to get a lawyer. And I did that. I got a lawyer before. You know what I'm saying? But I found that nobody's going to fight for you like you. I actually got a lot further when I fought for myself. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I got a lot further and I had to tell somebody that today. Like I, I got a lot further when I fought for myself, you know, because these lawyers don't have your, your these attorneys and lawyers sometimes don't have your best interest at heart. All they want is power, you know? Well, if you want to do this, you want to go a little step further, I can do this and prepare this, but you're going to have to give me this much amount of money uh, to, to, to do it. Like, no, nah, I'll do myself. So that's what you found yourself up against going into this court system, even with a person that you were paying to advocate for you wasn't even a real advocate. Yeah, you know, like, and I had to learn that the hard way because I went in, when I went in with him, I thought that it was going to be, you know, like, you know, I just thought like, yeah, he got me, you know, like, but I wasn't really satisfied with how he fought, you know? Mm -hmm. And even when we were in the courtroom, you know, he was like kind of grabbing my leg under the table because he wanted me to shut up. And I'm not that type of person that's going to shut up. I'm going to speak my mind. <laughs> I'm going to speak my mind, you know. So he's grabbing me under the table because I wanted to, you know, I'm not going to like go off or anything. Like I'm going to remain professional, but I'm going to speak my mind about certain things. I'm not just going to not, oh, no, don't say this, don't know. It needs to be said. You know, Why so, do you feel they didn't hear you the first time? I... I don't know. I feel like, it, like I said, I feel like they have, 
these preconceived notions about who we are as as black men and fathers, you know, because uh even the I fact think, that you have a job. Yeah, I think I, I just think that preconceived notions already about who we are. You know, um uh you know, I'm not trying to down nobody or nothing like that, but like, you know, I know when I went to court, I was like probably like only guy in there with a suit and tie on, like shirt and tie. Everybody else had like jeans and you know, uh jeans off their off their butts but no belt, like, you know, like <laughs> You know, so it's that, like, you know. They group they, everybody they, together. Yeah, it's like they just put us all in, a, in in one barrel, you know? And um, I mean, maybe that could be, I don't know. Maybe that's what it, what it, what it was, but, you know, I, I can't really say why they didn't listen, you know, but um, what can I say? What do you think finally made them listen? Um, well, I'm gonna say that they, they finally listened. You know, I had to make a, uh, adjustments myself, you know, like I mm -hmm. left my, um, you know, I had to, I came to, to, to the uh, conclusion that, you know, I would have to let what was going to happen, happen, you know, as much as I didn't want it to happen, you know, I'm, not, I'm trying not to give away the book, as much as I didn't want it to happen, you know, I had to let it happen and I had to figure out another way. You on know, your own. On my own. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. and that's where, that's where the maturity level comes in, where, you know, sometimes for the greater good, You've got to sacrifice and you've got to compromise with yourself. Just be real with yourself. Except, like, you know, this might be part of my path, you know, because it all ties in at the end. You know what I mean? Maybe this is happening for a reason. Maybe, maybe God wants me to venture out and see, you know, different parts of, of this world, you know, because it might give me a, 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 un, a, a, a what, how can I say this? It might give me a strength, you know, to, to want to carry on and, and see, you know, other parts of, you know the world or whatever you understand so mm -hmm. i mean it, it all ties in at the end you know sometimes we got to go through things to to get to where we need to be and realize that there are greater things out there. you know so i always say like things happen for a reason you know sometimes we just got to walk that path man. you know it's meant for us this is what's in front of me so this is what i'm gonna do you know no but that's good because like i said the book is um I think that it will help many people, uh, men and women alike, right? Um, and the reason being is because a lot of the times, everyone's situation is different, but everyone, if everyone has the ability to reason and to understand, um, you can come to the same conclusion and the same outcome, right? Like you said, Absolutely. you know, there, there are some there there are sometimes where you have to sacrifice for the greater good, right? And mm -hmm. In that sacrifice, you're just like, okay, you know, I know for um, at one point in time, um, my nephew, he was young and my sister, she had lost her job up here in New York and she, they were going to, they were, her job was willing to transfer her down to Florida. And she went to my nephew's father and asked him, do you mind if I go to Florida? And the only request that he had was basically don't take my son from me. Right. Mm -hmm. And she said, I would never do that. And they moved and, you know, they moved to Florida, you know what I'm saying? And vacations, he went, he picked them up, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't the same as the every other weekend, but he made mm -hmm. sure, you know what I'm saying? To get him, you know, in the summertime and, you know, make sure that, you know, they maintained um, their level of connection and their level of, you know, a relationship. Um, yeah, like, it definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, those, and, those, and those type of instances, because it sounds like, you know, a lot like what, you know, some of the stuff that's discussed in this book, you know, like um, in those instances, it's learning lessons in that for the children and for, you know, the adults like, like you know, uh, involved, you know, like if you truly like open up your mind and embrace it all, you know, like it's so much knowledge just in that alone, you know, just in that, in that part of the journey, man, it's just so much knowledge in that alone you know, things that you gain, man, like, it's, it's crazy. And I, I never really understood that, you know, like, I understood what needed to happen. But as I went on this journey and continued on this journey, man, I've learned so much, <laughs> you know, and it's just invaluable, man. Like, you know, the relationship that I have with my daughter, the things that I'm able to teach her, the place that we've been able to, to see, you know, like, it's it's been amazing, you know. So what message would you have not just for men, but for women. 
Uh, I'm going to say two things, you know, for, for uh, men and women, you know, uh, education about, you know, everything, you know, like is important. But like the biggest, the biggest lesson, um, the biggest lesson that I, I can say is to just embrace your life, man. You know, like walk, walk the path that's meant for you. Don't, you know, push back in something that might be like a, a struggle or you know, something that, that, that might not be like your best moment. You know, don't push back from it because like, you're going to learn so much, you know, from it, you know, like, um, and also just, you know, not, don't be afraid to let go of the things that are no longer meant for you. You know, don't, you know, uh, like, like just bind yourself down. Don't, you know what I'm saying? Like if it's not meant for you anymore, just embrace like, you know, like, like one door closes, blaze through more. You understand? Like, don't be afraid mm -hmm. to, to just like let go of things that aren't meant for you, you know, any, any longer. You know, things and people, you know, things, people, whatever it is, don't be afraid to just let it go. What about for mothers who honestly struggle? Um, it's the opposite of your situation. So there are mothers that literally struggle with their, their children's father because the man doesn't want to necessarily be in the child's life. Okay. So that, that, that goes down to this where and I'm, I'm just saying uh, for, for me as a man right now, I'm, I'm giving mm -hmm. a message to, to those women though. You know, I wear the serenity prayer on my left forearm. You know, serenity prayer mm -hmm. about situations that you can control and situations <laughs> that you can't control. You can't force somebody to be or do something that they don't want to do. All you can focus on is what you can't control. So you can control yourself being the best mother you can be. You know what I mean? You don't have mm -hmm. to answer for him. You don't have to do any of that because he's going to have to answer for that for himself. You know what I mean? On on his judgment day, he'll have to answer for that. You understand? So yeah. just control your situation. Whatever you can control, control. You know, be the best parent that you can be to your children. That's what my, my mom was. You know, my mom, you know, uh, she struggled. But I could tell you what, you know, I've seen my mother cry. I've seen my mother cry, you know, where she, she doesn't even know that we saw her cry some of the times we saw her from. Mm -hmm. You know, but she made a way, you know, like she made a way. And she was the best, you know, parent that a, a son could even ask for, you know, a daughter. She made it happen, you know. Like we my grandparents and my uncle, you know, I love all you guys, you know what I mean? But, you know, my mom made it happen, man. You know, I don't know. It was it was times where I'm like, you know, I don't know how, you know, she was you know, going to happen, but she did. You know, she couldn't control, you know, uh, you know, my father not being, there. you know, mm -hmm. as much as we asked her, like, you know, what's going on? Like, where, you know, where's that? Like, you know, you know, uh, she couldn't control that. All she could control was, you know, what she could do with us in her house. You understand? And that's what she did. And I'll be forever grateful for that. You know. Have you ever asked your mother how she felt? All the time, you know, and um, <laughs> all the time. I don't really get the answers that I want. Maybe one day I will, <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, all the time, like I got, I got two more books coming up. So I know it's going to be some moments where I'm going to have to talk to her and she's going to talk to me. Mommy, you're going to talk to me, you know, about, you know, what actually, you know, transpired or whatever. But, you know, I, I even tried to, you know, talk to my dad like a couple times about it, but I never really get, you know, the answer is like our relationship has been a little better. Like we talk a little more now, you know, but like when we were younger, it was just, you know, he, he was just wasn't there. You know, it's not, not about like money, not that he, you know, like gave a lot of money or whatever, but you know, all we wanted was the time, you know, time is everything. I know like, um, like I know from my own, from my own personal self, um, when I finally met, I met my biological father when I was young. I had to be about 10 or some, somewhere around there. But then I met him again in my 20s. And in my 20s, I could not understand. I, I tried to understand why he wasn't there. But at the time in which we met, it just wasn't resonating. I was like, I don't care. That makes absolutely no sense. 
you, you understand what I'm saying? Like a lot of the time, like his main uh, reason for not being in my life was basically because your mother didn't want me there. And yeah. for me, um, it was, that's not a reason at the, at, at that, at that time when I met him. Um, but then as I began to mature, to understand where my mother was at, at the time in which she, you know, she did leave. And at the time in which, uh, it, at the time in which she was living, I was like, yeah, there probably is a little bit more truth to what he was saying than I originally thought. Right. And I think oftentimes as women, we make do with what's given to us. Like we're going to make do with that. We're going to make do with what's given, you know? And um, sometimes uh, the way in which a woman attempts to protect can sometimes do a little bit more harm than good. And I think as a mother, you take on this, the, the, the nurturing role when you have a child, because the, the ultimate goal is I got to nurture this being, and I got to nurture this being into somebody. Um, you know, they don't stay a baby forever. They don't stay a toddler forever. They don't stay an adolescent forever. They don't stay a teenager forever. I have to nurse this being. I got to nurture it into becoming. And I think sometimes when you're attempting to nurture a person into becoming, you kind of lose the message of the becoming because what you do is you nurture them, uh, in a way that could be proven to be a little bit, uh, it, it's not as good. And I think that sometimes um, not having a father present, whether you are a, a you know, a, a lot of times we believe that, oh, boys need their fathers, but so do girls. Daughters need their fathers, right? Oh, I'll tell you what, uh, uh, mm -hmm. there's, truth, there's truth to the saying. Like these sayings come from some place, from somewhere, like in history, I don't know where, but you know, the phrase daddy's girl, mama's boy is truth to that. You know what I'm saying? It's truth to it. It's true because a girl needs her, her, uh, a daughter needs her father, you know, just as much as a son needs his mother and vice versa. Mm -hmm. You know, like as much as my mother, you know, and I love my mother, you know, as much as she did us and taught us, she couldn't teach me a hundred percent of the way how to be a man. You understand? Like my uncles had to fill in, you know, for that, you know, and do certain things with us, just like with my daughter. You know, like I can't teach my daughter certain things. I could tell her what I know, you know what I mean? But certain things I can't teach you. You understand? The things that I right. can teach my, you know, <laughs> like, so, you know, they, they go hand to hand. Like we, they're both parents are needed. Absolutely. And I think that's probably one of the biggest misconceptions is that both are not needed. Right. Yeah, it is a big misconception. And like you just said, you know, I, I had my stepdad who later on adopted me later on in life. But um, I had him because I think one, one of one of the issues, especially for a daughter to grow up without the image of a father is because that image of the father is what she's going to imitate, emulate within her relationship <laughs> with men, period. You know, and I never forget when I finally met my biological father and he told me all about himself and his life and the women and this, that, and that. I literally told them, and I was like, you know what? I really date men like you. And he was like, what do you mean? I was like, you use women and I date men who use me. Somehow, some way I have picked this up. And somehow, some way now I got to fight against this because now I see where it comes from. You know what I'm saying? And it was, it, you know, and, it, you know, and that resonated with me for years, even up to this day, it still resonates um, with me because for some odd, like it, it's not even for some odd reason, but, you know, I always, I seem to always attract inconsistent men, but my dad was inconsistent. My biological father, he was inconsistent. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it, it's still a lot of that we're, and it's probably because it's the it's the opposite effect. Because he wasn't there, I'm used to that inconsistency, right? So I think uh -huh. that it, it, it's important for young girls to see an image that they can respect yep. from a man. And, and it goes back to another saying that, like, again, I don't know where it came from in history, but, you know, a father is a son's hero and a daughter's love. 
Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's truth to that. It's absolute truth, 100% truth in all of that. You know? So. So I think that's good. I think um, people reading this, A Father's Plight, they're really going to pick up on the heart of a true father and the heart of a man and a heart of a person, a human being that is saying, this can't be it. You know what I'm saying? And 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 going through and maneuvering through um, the changes of life, no matter what was thrown, you know, at you, which leads us, which, which, which leads us to Miss Elizabeth here. Because, hi. hi. Because what I, I I know sometimes as as a publisher, when you hear the stories, you didn't have you. It's like something just clicks, and you're like, oh okay, let's go for this. Yeah. What what was that click for you? Um, with the father's plight, mm -hmm. um, the click was just the the passion that was behind it, even before. Um, really getting to know Justin like the way that I know him now it was really I could tell the passion the passion was in his writing and also this is something that I can't relate to I'm not a mom or anything but I did grow up without a father so this it, it was more like a personal thing as well so that's what made me realize like yeah I have to like it was it was extremely important and also so how because I, I, I personally, I think that it's important um, for authors, right? Because a, a lot of the times an author can have an idea, but it takes the publisher to kind of shape it and mold it. Right. Well, it's like when you <clears throat> hear the stories, you then have to envision it. And yeah. then you have to get it out. How does that process look for you? Um, the process of that for me is, I guess I would say like really reading it more than once that definitely helps like envision it. Um, almost thinking it as in the form of, like I said, I'm a very relatable and personal person. Um, so more so envisioning it as related to myself. Um, yeah, that's what I would say. Like that's how I would answer that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I think that it's important. I think so for a lot of people that don't fully understand that the whole, uh, the whole writing process. So there are different ways in which you could literally write a book. A person can give you a, 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 a manuscript, right. You know what I'm saying? And then you can literally just fall in love with the manuscript and be like, okay, well, you know what? <laughs> we need to take this manuscript. We got to put this in book form. Right. Yeah. Mm hmm. Then there's a, there, there's a, there are other processes where a person might not necessarily be a writer, but they're a verbal communicator. So they verbally tell you everything, right. you know what I'm saying? And then, and a lot of the times, I think from, from, from what I just gathered from what you just said is if it can click somewhere within me, then I know it's going to click somewhere within some, then within, a, within the targeted audience that we going for. And that is when the vision just literally just takes off. Right. And I think that's important um, for people to know that when you're shopping your stories around, yeah, uh huh, it got to resonate somewhere deep within your soul before it's going to resonate within someone else's. Exactly. Because, I, yeah. I, got a, I, actually got, I actually got a story about this, you know, because um, Elizabeth wasn't, wasn't my first, you know, uh, publisher. Mm. Right. Come well, on, it's you okay. know. She said, uh, right. Go ahead. Yeah, because I, I told her the story, too. <laughs> I told the story, too. Um, the first publisher, you know, that I had, I ain't going to say no names, you know. No but, worries. Um, right. The muzzle is you know, before, you know, yeah, the muzzle was off. It's definitely <laughs> off. You know, um, the first publisher I had, you know, before I even submitted my, you know, my, my manuscript, I wasn't even finished with it yet. I was more than halfway done. You know, and they were telling me, uh, I, I told them I didn't want to submit my manuscript just yet. You know, I wanted to make sure it was finished before I, I, I submitted, you know, but they said, well, in the meantime, 
you know, we're going to give you full, you know, uh, control. Like if you want like a certain picture on the cover and, you know, you want this, you want that, you know, just let us know. Submit the pictures and do this, this, that, and the third. So I submitted this picture to them. This exact picture of me, you know, and uh, my daughter or whatever. And mm -hmm. um, they told me it wasn't going to work. They said it wouldn't work. You know, oh, just, you know, let us, let us, uh, uh, you know, we could come up with a different cover, you know, and I'm like, well, why won't it work? Well, the picture is too grainy, you know, the black and white picture won't, you know, just told me it wouldn't work. And I knew better than that. You know, this was a five heartbeat uh, moment, <laughs> you know? And uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I told them, I said, you know what? I'll take my money, you know, like, let me have my money back, you know, the money that I paid into it. And, um, you know, I just waited, I was patient. And, uh, you know, that's when, I was introduced to Elizabeth, man, and uh, you know we hit the ground running right off, right off the bat. We hit the ground running. And they gave you your money back. Yeah, they gave me money back. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, that was yeah. Oh. Well, yeah nice. They told me that, and you see how that came out, right? Yeah, I love the cover. I told you. Thank you, thank you Elizabeth. You. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> she she like, mm -hmm. and I just want to say um, to the point that I was going to bring up earlier with that you brought up about authors. I just want to say that out of all the authors that I've had, Justin is the most hardworking. I mean, when I tell you we go every day, every day is a new conversation. How can we yeah. go harder? I've had authors where I've done a book trailer for them. They didn't post it. I've had authors where we dropped their book and, and a year later, they not one post on there, on their page about their book. And Justin, this isn't just Oh, I wanted to write and sell my book for money. No, he wrote it because it was his true life experience and he wants to help other young men. Outside okay. your book, I sent him young men. I sent young men to call him. Outside of the sales and all that other type of stuff, I sent young men to call him because he really wants to help. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we appreciate anybody who wants to buy the book, but that's not what it's all about. It's true passion, you know, behind it. Mm -hmm. And so I that's the first time I found like an author that every day it's like I, I I it's like thinking about it as a day job, really. That's what it seems like. Wake wake up and go all day, go hard for yeah. it. It's like it's like his we, job. We, yeah, we, we trying to we trying to push this thing something to, to new heights, man. We uh we talking so about did you retire? adapted to uh No 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 I'm just asking. Nah, that's just how hard he goes. Look, you heard me. I'm like, I'm just asking. I don't know. Trust but, and believe. Uh, I, know, I completely just, we, we, understand we, that that level of dedication. When you, when yeah, you... we're trying to we're trying to push it to new heights, though. Like we, uh, like I said, this has been a dream of mine to write. You know, to, to write. You know, I graduated from high school in 1999. You know, in 1999, I graduated from St. Benedict's Prep, and um, like I always had this dream, like passion. You know, to want to write a book. And, you know, along the way, like places I've worked, you know, like I've always said, like, I'm going to write a book one day. I'm going to write a book. And people have told me, you know what I mean? Like, oh, you ain't writing nothing. I'm like, get out of here. My managers, people that I've done work for, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, and then boom, that's neither book. boom. Yep. But that's neither here nor there, you know. But, uh, you know, it was always a passion. It was always a dream. And for me to be able to do it, you know, when the message became clear to me that you need to write about this topic, you know, the fashion in which I'm able to do this, incorporate my children, you know, it's, it's just been amazing. You know, like I said, this is the first of like three books. Um, uh, each book is going to depict like, me and one of my children. Um, um, and there's messages behind what I'm trying to do, you know, you know, to them, you know, I just want them to, to, to stay connected and never forget who each other are. And also, you know, when you get old enough to really comprehend what it is that I'm doing here, you know, whatever dream you guys may have, you know, I might be dead and gone, but, you know, this is going to be, you know, we are your age. So this will be probably prehistoric by the time y'all get, you know, old. But always look back at these messages, man. You know, like whatever your dreams are, chase them. You know, like your dreams, like uh, just chase your dreams, man. You know, your dreams, you know, coincidentally, like sometimes like are your purpose in life. You know, and I feel like this is my purpose. Your purpose coincides with your dreams, and your dreams coincide with your purpose. Once you find it, chase it. And I think that's important. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of the times, people get discouraged along the way. 
Um, like you yeah, said, it took you it took you three years. You know, when I wrote in um when I wrote in the anthology that I wrote in, it was like it didn't take it didn't, it didn't take me three years because I knew I, I needed to purge my mind, right? Because everything was so fresh with what happened. I needed to purge it because it was like it was it was literally like stuck right here. And I was like, I'm gonna drive myself crazy if I don't purge it, right? So um, when I was asked to write in it, I was like, sure, no problem here. What's my timeline? And I kid you not. So she gave the timeline. I probably wrote it the day before mm-hmm. because it took it took like it took me two months to actually build up enough coverage to purge my mind because I, I couldn't do it. You know what I'm saying? And I think that sometimes what, what people fail to understand is, is that um, when you live something and then you're like, now I got to write about it, which means now I got to visualize it, which means now I got to relive it all again in my mind. And I literally, I did one big part. I promise you, Adrian will tell you, I think she said I sent them how many other pages? And I definitely did. It was like, it was my own book and it wasn't, it was an anthology. So they had to chop all that up. But um, I think that it's important. Um, People used to always tell me years ago, they're like, you just need to write a story about your life. Your life is a book. And I'm like, it is not a book. I just went through some crap that a lot of other people probably could relate to, but no, I'm not going to write it. But when I went through that last situation, I was like, I guess it's time to write something. I got to put something down. And I think that it's important because what we experience as a whole, everybody go through life and you experience something good, bad, or indifferent. If it's a good experience, then you can share that. If it's a bad experience, you can share that. If it's an indifferent experience, share that. Share your experience. Because somehow, okay. some way, someone's going to find a message in that. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And I think a exactly. lot of times, and listen, what people don't, people fail to realize, Amazon done took over the world. <laughs> they have, they have Amazon have gross, took, and everything, yo. <laughs> you got grocery, you got video, you got <laughs> books, you got electronics, you got the whole marketplace. Yeah, Amazon done took over the world. Everybody is a writer using Amazon. Everybody is a producer using Amazon. And Mm -hmm. Amazon lets you do this crap for free. Yeah. (laughs) That's what a lot of folk don't want to tell you. That ISBN number on Amazon is free. I could film this right now and call it a documentary and upload it to Amazon Prime Video for free. It's like this in this in today in 2021 there is nothing that is limiting or stopping you from being you. That's nothing. Right. Nothing, nothing. That's right. <laughs> and right. that's what people are failing to realize. Yeah, Do you need that stopping you was you? You stopping you was you. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm not selling people to just go up in Amazon's uh, Amazon, what they call it, AD, APD, whatever the heck that's called. I'm not saying for you to just go up there and just upload some or come author because you need an editor. <laughs> Your content needs to be right. You absolutely do. You should get behind a publisher. Like mm-hmm. everybody can't, everybody can't self publish. Everybody ain't great. I personally, I'm not graced for that, the self publishing world. I am not. Mm-hmm. Period. That's just not my forte. I don't want to format nothing. I don't want to, I'm not doing none of that. And I'm just being honest, right? So get behind a publisher because there's some things that you, unless you got it like that and you, you know, you got all the patience in the world. I personally don't, I don't have the type of time, but we are in a society, we are in a day and time right now in, in this world, in society where there's nothing that stops you, but you, and everybody needs to go after all things all things okay the same way how like you said it took yeah right right now like we're trying to to take this thing to a a whole nother level man you know we will how how long are we talking liz for like an hour hour and a half um trying to trying to get it get trying to get it adapted man i would love to see it see it on the screen man you know do you know a director uh like we've been uh We've been doing some networking, man. Uh, like we don't, you know, uh, we've been doing some networking, and we we decided to do some things on our own, you know, like just some research and and uh, try to try to really get it off the ground, you know, that way. But, like a movie director? Yeah, cause yeah, a real like a director. Yes, my mom Zane is a movie director. 
Oh, Zane is your mother. Yeah, yep. so she's <laughs> done movies. So yeah, we. I, I mean, she definitely did the movie, the whole addict girl. You know what? That's yeah. a whole. Hey, movie. Liz, I I want to just throw that out there like that. I know. <laughs> you know what? I, look, look. Tell your mother she grew me up. You hear me? Listen, <laughs> girl. Addicted, lit, girl. Zane grew me up. You mm -hmm. I was reading them Zane books at the good eighteen, nineteen. Like, all of them. I had every single last Zane book out. You and, and oh, you did what, ma'am? I don't think you understand. And and then back and, and back then, Sorry. me and my friends, we were saying, "Hey, you know what? This is so." I think Callie, Callie might remember this because it was her sister. We all said that we was gonna use pseudo names and um, write um, erotic books because of Zane, and we ain't never oh, wow. do it. Uh -huh. see, look, hey, see, look. We all <laughs> said we we all said we was gonna write erotic books because of Zane. We ain't never did it. You know what? I, I you know what? I'm gonna have to get with I'm gonna have to get with uh, Shayla and um and, and Siobhan because we all said we was gonna write erotic novels because of Zane, and Listen, we ain't never do. Make it happen because she can make it happen for you. I'm telling you, she's she's a powerhouse, man. Like she's very uh very connected and she knows what she's doing. So listen. I'm you know. back. When that listen, but, but now you didn't say that out, you know what? I'm like, oh okay. Y'all got to y'all got to and, and you know, and I was really going to ask you, which is crazy, but I was really going to ask you, are you gonna put the cause I think that this is a good um story for film. So I really was gonna ask you, like, are you gonna put this um uh, in motion? Oh, we, we're trying right now. We we've been talking. Like we've been mm -hmm. really having some uh, some real discussions, and we really uh been doing a lot of networking. We've been doing a lot of networking. Yes. Like uh, you know, I don't know. Like, you want to talk about that experience, Liz? <laughs> well, yeah, we've been doing a lot of networking on Clubhouse. I don't know if you. Just... Oh, Girl. No, yeah. Yes, I love Clubhouse. We've been doing a lot of networking on Clubhouse for sure. Um, some good, some bad. I like Clubhouse, but. Um, it's it, we've been in some some heavy hitting rooms. I will say that. Yeah, we we've been in some real heavy hitting rooms, like talking to some real you know heavy hitting people. You know, and I, I'm telling I've been, I've been telling people use Clubhouse for networking. Uh huh. I ain't going on there for church services. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, we've been we've been right. you know we've been uh trying to trying to make some stuff happen, but uh the only thing with Clubhouse is you know. You know, everybody, everybody's body says what they do, but like, you know, like I, I spoke in one of these heavy hitting rooms. I spoke mm -hmm. in one of these, like probably like the heaviest hitting room there was to speak. And I told them exactly what my product was, why what? I did it, you know, like I uh, gave the, the backstory behind it. And they were, they were ready to eat it up. They were eating it up. The guy told me, he was like, oh man, get my DM right now. Like, you know, a connect, a well connected, mm -hmm. you know. And um, you know, I said, "Hey, say say less." I went right to his DMs, got right in his DMs. You know what I mean? Because like we really, I really feel like I really feel that strongly, passionately about this that it would adapt the film well and the message. Like, there's so many Easter eggs about life in this book. You know, like that people might not get right off the bat. You know, but, um, like I said, I hopped right in his his DM, and and um, once I got in the DM, like everything just slowed down. Like he says, "Oh well, I gotta." I got to see if it's really, really worth, you know, the time. And, and I said, okay, like, I know stuff is worth, like, you know, like worthwhile because it's real, you know? So it, it kind of offended me a little bit, you know? So that's right. when me and Liz started, we started talking like, man, we do this, we're going to do it ourselves. We might, we, we may have everything we already need, you know? So, you know, that's, that's where that ended up. One of the things that I learned, because when we did the anthology, we put the anthology on um, Prime Video, right? Mm -hmm. It was released on Prime Video like back in December, right? Um, one of the things that I have realized through that whole entire process is that probably some of the best work that you could ever do is work that you do for yourself. Exactly. Um, the way you're promoting, the way that you're pushing, the way that this is relatable to everybody Man and woman are like, this is relatable. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has experience, even from my own personal self, whether it was me watching my sister go through it with, you know, with my nephew, 
Because it wasn't all peaches and cream. Okay, I, I ain't lie. The muzzle came off, so I'm not going to lie. I'm going to tell her business either. But it definitely was not all peaches and cream. There were situations, okay? There were situations that took place that, you know, it wasn't all it wasn't all good. You know what I'm saying? It was it was it was a lot. It was it was um it was it was a lot. It was stressful. But I think that the ty this type of story will resonate with everybody because everybody can relate to it in a way, whichever way they can relate. As a man who feels like he lost his voice inside of a court system that did not want to hear him, right? There are also women. I know of a woman who lost her kids to her husband because he lied, her ex-husband because he lied. There are women who have gone through this. You know what I'm saying? The same type of way, no voice, you know? And then I've seen the flip side of it. I've seen men be very vindictive against the women and make their lives a living hell going to court. You know what I'm saying? All because a woman is trying to do what? Protect their child, right? And then I've seen the flip side of it. Some of these women running these men through court and all the man is trying to do is be there for their child yeah. and and do what and protect their child so it's always it goes, it goes both ways you know? it goes everything goes but and that's why I'm, I'm, I'm you know i'm so tired of it I, I don't like uh imbalanced conversations i don't like it at all right because i just feel that everything in in all things there is a balance so i can't just point finger one way without looking the other way as well because everything has a reverse that's right right but in, in all things, there's a level of understanding that everybody here, because at the end of the day, whomever is causing the strife didn't get there on their own. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we fail to understand and we fail to realize that most of that stuff is rooted in a whole lot of pain, a, lo a whole lot of hurt, which then turned into pure bitterness and rage. And boom, yep. now, we, now, now we got children suffering at the hands of two adults that just could not adult. You, exactly. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that that's the part that kills me because it's just like, you know, adults need to learn how to adult. When you mm -hmm. decide to have children, you need to learn how to be an adult, period. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't, they don't know how to. They don't know how to, you know, differentiate or, or raise a level of maturity, you know, because it, it boils down to maturity too, you know? Yeah. You know, and a lot of times people, well, you don't have any children. You understand? Pause all that. I can. Jesus didn't have kids, <laughs> exactly. and he and he understood. So I can understand too. I might not have gone through the physical. Ex and you know what? All jokes aside, right? I had told I told people I'm like, you know, one other thing I said, the Lord must have clearly had me to miscarry because I was gonna be one of those bitter baby mamas. I ain't even gonna lie. I'm gonna tell the truth because I would have got ghosts with my child. Yeah. Straight ghost. I would have did thing. it. Yeah. That's the thing, like you know, and that's, that's well, you know, we'll we'll touch on that a little bit later. But uh, you know, that, that that's another thing that that I, I try to teach in that book, you know, about you know, men and like joint custody, man, you know, because uh, he wouldn't you know, be able to it, find us. I was that. I don't think you understand the way my level was, and he was the type that probably wouldn't even look, and I would have made sure. Of, and and see, this is the flip. This is the flip side that people do not fully understand. For me, it was going, it was more so going to be about because of the woman he was with. And I knew that that woman would have never protected my child, right? Mm -hmm. Because of the situation that was, that was going on. You know what I'm saying? He married me, but was cheating with her. And she always felt that she was first and also the extra crazy stuff. So now me and him get this, we go through what we go through. I'm pregnant, but I'm like, okay. But he's now with her. It was just, it was, a, it was, a, it was a, it was a very dangerous and toxic situation. And for me, I was just like, you know what? I know this little girl is very vindictive, and I know that if, for some odd reason, if I give birth to this child and I have to send my child with this man, number one, he's not going to protect my child. And if something happens to my child, I am going to lose it. And I honestly believe the Lord was just like, you know what? We just gonna have to call this one a rat because she gonna go all the way across the country somewhere, and she gonna be one of the little bitter uh, baby mothers raising somebody's child, hating the father. Though I, we can't have, we got too many of these toxic ones out here there, so she ain't gonna be part of that life. I make jokes about it now, but I'm just saying, in real, in, in all honesty, I really was gonna, I really was gonna do that. Like I was, I, there was, there was no way I was gonna let that woman be around my child. I'm being honest, and sometimes. We just have to be real about that as well, because I wouldn't. I was not. 
and we have to be real too as men. And to that point that I just, uh, you know, I just said about being real and everything going both ways, you know, the direction of the second book is going to be that, you know, it's going to mm. be a deeper look, it's going to be a deeper look, you know, into, you know, us as men and some things that, that, that we can do to cause ourselves, uh, you know, strife, you know, uh, father's plight, you know, I am too, you know, I have the name. It's going to be a, a different name. It's going to be a father's plight volume too, but, uh, but you know, it's going to, it's going to be, it's going to be a different, uh, like name. Like this is a memoir about the struggles of, you know, being a, a father or whatever. But, um, so Elizabeth, book, it's going to have a different name. Yes, I'm here. I just feel like this is a whole movement of father's plight. Me it too. Oh, okay. <laughs> Me too. It is. Mm -hmm. There's a whole movement. Yeah, like a real whole move. Like this is a whole movement. Like y'all yeah. need more men. With that being said, you guys can follow our Instagram page called Black Fathers Up, the movement. Why you ain't giving it to me before today? Huh? Oh, I was going to give it to you on, on air. I'm sorry. I haven't really done anything else with that page. I haven't done anything with it yet, you know, but I'm going to start doing stuff with it like soon. Mm -mm, mm -mm. What, what's it called for the for the people? It's called like Fathers underscore the movement. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't really done anything with that page yet, but, you know, I'm going to start. You said uh, what? Black Fathers Up. Oh. Black fathers up. Yep, and it's the underscore. Oh, underscore the movement. All right. Yep. I found it. Okay. Yep. That's uh. It's only three posts on it right now, but you know we're gonna be doing something with that real soon. No, but I think that's important. So let me put this right here. Follow at black fathers up. Underscore movement on IG. Yeah, I see what you're doing. Oh, okay. My bad. I should have gave it to you earlier. Then. <laughs> see what I'm saying? Because I'd have had the whole, whole thing yep. right there ready. And, <laughs> you know, like, why you ain't giving it to me beforehand? No, because I think that's important. I think, because like I said, I really think that is a, that is a very um powerful i think this is a movement like i just said and so y'all already started to started the movement and i think right. that a lot of you know black male fathers um follow this movement black fathers up i think that is important that's one of the reasons like i said this i said um i don't know how long i'm doing this for for as long as these as for as long as these good black men want to talk i want them on um for the simple fact that i just feel like you know women we we've been empowered we've been moved we've been all of that but it's time for men to rise up and be empowered as well. You know what I'm exactly. saying? We got all these conferences, how to be a wife, how to be a mother, how to be this, if you want to be that, so and so this, all, all this stuff. And it's like, we're, 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 when are we really empowering up our black men? Like for real, for real, forget all this pomp and circumstance type stuff. Where do, where's the real empowerment? So I like the fact that you have this black father's, um, up the movement because so can you talk about that a little bit what's well, your just, uh, what's your focus what's your what's your what's all that the focus is celebrating celebrating black fatherhood you know just celebrating black fatherhood you know point blank period is it can i bring light to something real quick mm -hmm. <coughs> i'm sorry i feel like we say Black fatherhood, as if black ones are the, uh, as if black men are the only ones who are considered like you hear the word deadbeat is it's associated with black, but I watch a lot of TV shows. One includes a show called Teen Mom, and there's a lot of white fathers out here who either aren't doing anything or go through the same thing because fatherhood has no color. There's more than you know. There's a lot of people that, and there's some white white men who go through the same struggles now not necessarily when it comes to court probably not but when it comes to the woman they do the same thing holding the child over their head not letting them see them so although it is about black fatherhood um the book is for everybody i feel like mm -hmm. any father that faces anything 
you know, because they, they kill themselves too. They go through a lot as well. Um, so I just wanted to bring light that like deadbeat doesn't mean black. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. Thank you. Cause well that said. needs to be a hashtag dead bleep, deadbeat doesn't mean black. Exactly. <laughs> it, 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 there is no color to deadbeat. It just is what it is. You know what? Let me write that in here. Deadbeat doesn't be black because I actually like that. Because people always are so, but, but, and that's the stigmatism. It is. People always want to act like we, oh. And the truth, you know what, never mind. That ain't what we talk. But let me ask you this because you, I, I did, you, you, you did say something before. Um, when, when we spoke in person, you said something about, um, um, I believe it was when you graduated high school. I think it was yeah, here yeah, when you graduated high school and you actually cried. Yeah. And one of the things that you were very passionate about is the fact that men should be in touch with their emotions and it's okay for a man to actually cry <laughs> and feel emotion. So, it and it, it, it definitely is, okay? Um, but sometimes I feel that um, we get lost in toxic masculinity. You're right. We do. What is, your, what is your take on that? Because a lot of people do not necessarily know what toxic. Well, no, let me say this. The reason why a lot of people don't know what it is is because it's not necessarily cl clearly defined. There's no standard textbook definition of toxic masculinity, right? Um, I think that I think there is a definition. It's called pride. You know, sometimes you got to learn to swallow it. You know, whatever that means to you. You know, like sometimes it's again, it's okay to cry. It's okay to ask for help. You know, like, and this is it leads right back into what I was talking about about men internalizing and internalizing so much to their own detriment. You understand? Mm -hmm. you, got, you got men out here that are killing themselves. That's that toxic masculinity. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to walk around and be big and bad for who. <laughs> You know, because crying is not a, it's not a, like people might say, uh, society might have you believe that it's a sign of weakness, but it's not. God gave us all the ability to feel for a reason. I don't care how old you are, man, woman, child, even animals, dogs cry. <laughs> you know, animals cry. You understand? So, you know, that's, that's, that's your God given right. You know what I mean? So don't let nobody sit there and say, well, are you a man? Stop, you know, stop crying or whatever. But, you know, you can cry. You know what I mean? But in those tears, you know what I mean? Like I said, there's knowledge and struggle. And, you know, like usually when you cry, it's a moment of struggle or a moment that, that you know, is, is is something wrong, you know? Like, but at the end of every tear you shed, at the end of every tear you shed, there's a decision that you, you have to make. You know what I'm saying? So I call those moments moments of empowerment. You know what I mean? Like, like they're, what are you going to do now moments? What are you prepared to do about this now? You understand? Like when I, I went to court and, you know, when I got laughed out of court, what was going on, you know what I mean? Like I, I cried, you know what I mean? Like I'm not ashamed to say that, you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, I knew what I had to do at the end of it, you know? Like I'm going to let this off, I'm going to get these tears off real quick, and then I'm going to collect myself and do something about it. You understand? So let go. Stop internalizing so much. You don't have to. And I think that's important, right? And, um, that's why I brought that up. I have wrote it. I have wrote it down um, as a point because I think a lot of the times when you tell a man that he's not allowed to feel, and mm -hmm. he's not allowed to hurt, and he's not allowed to express, right? Um, it, it 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 breeds that level of toxic masculinity because Absolutely. it's like, how can I not? Then when a man is in touch with his uh, you know, emotions, and he does let out a cry or two or three. Some some men cry a lot more than that, but I, I, that's fine. But um, <laughs> I'm just saying, some some cry. Um, you know, they real in touch and in tune. But um, <laughs> then a woman looks at them like, "You ain't masculine enough for me." Yeah. You know but what I'm saying? So that, that's a that's a part of that toxicity. Do you not think? Yeah, that is toxic. Cause how you going to tell? Okay. Because you know, he a little bit more in tune. So now, and I had posed a question before. Hey, Donnie. He, Donnie said, good evening, everyone. Um, I had posed a question before concerning, like literally concerning just that, because I, I find that, you know what I'm saying? We don't understand the balance 
a man that's in tune, you know what I'm saying, with, with his feelings and his, and 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 not saying that he's sore for anything like that, but he's just in tune with his feelings and his emotions. We're gonna tell him you ain't masculine enough for me. But then a man that literally does not connect emotionally at all, you want that. How he can't connect. Hey, it's like a you damned if you do, you damned if you don't situation. <laughs> it is, and that's I, but the, I think that's the that's the that's the way of the world these days, man. I don't know, I don't get it, you know, but uh, I don't know. I get it. <laughs> it's sad that that's where we are today. You know what I'm saying? And I think that quite possibly, um, when you dig into the heart of a man, which is the reason why I like this whole. This, 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 this entire movement, Black Fathers Up, the movement, um, because I think that it's going to be empowering to men uh, to deal with how they feel. And a lot of times men do not want to talk about how they feel openly, but they will do it in a, in a setting um, that they feel safe in. Because a lot of the times in order to break this so-called toxic masculinity, well, a man has to feel safe. Mm-hmm. And if he feels and if he doesn't feel safe and he doesn't feel like he could trust you, then therefore he's not going to open up with you concerning his emotions, his feelings. You know what I'm saying? Even even some of them, they won't even open up with you with their own intellect. All of that goes, all of that plays a major role in this. And I think that it's important that we begin to have these. Yeah, like we begin to have these conversations. conversations. Yeah, and these just are the, have, these are the tough. Like you, you always hear about people saying the tough conversations, the tough conversations, the tough conversations. Well, this is one of them. It's definitely one of them. You know, there's no, you know, it's time to stop, stop beating around the bush. You know, uh, about this this type of stuff, man. You know, what I'm saying like, you know, these little conversations can go a long way. You know, with our brother like mental health. You know, all of it. You know what I mean? It could go a long way. You know what I mean? It can go a long way. And everybody at a certain point in time needs somebody that they can talk to uh, concerning whatever it is that they got going on in their mind. Because I know I am quick to be like, you got a minute, I need, I need to talk. And a lot of the times, which is not that it's weird, um, I don't necessarily share with women, I share with men. Hmm. Like, I'll go, like, if I, like, I'll, I will literally FaceTime my cousin and be like, let me run this by you. Boom. You know what I'm saying? Tell me what you think about this. You know what I'm saying? Or I'll contact my friend and be like, listen, I need a couch session. Come on. Cause I, you need to sit on the couch. I need to talk because to me, I'm a woman. So I know women energy, right? So sometimes you have to have the, 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 the contrast to all of that. And it's imperative because, you know, I could be very emotional and I need somebody to be like, you're just in your feelings right now. I need you to calm that down and let's just deal with, let's hit it right here. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I think that's important. And I also think that even for a man, because sometimes for some reason, I know people think I, I'm an easy person to talk to. I guess I am because I listen, right? But you know what I'm saying? Like my cousin, he'll call me like, here, what about, what about this? What about that? So-and-so. And, I, and we talk, like we literally, we bounce everything. And he'll tell, let me tell you something. My cousin does not sugarcoat nothing for me. He will tell me when I am dead wrong. Like, no, nah, I would have did way. that. The same way. I would have did it that way. You, you were wrong in that situation. I'm gonna tell you, if you're wrong, you're wrong. You know I, don't I don't care I, who you are. I don't think I. <laughs> I don't think I like that too much, but I'd be having to respect it a little bit. But he was straight tell me uh -huh. one time. He really he straight. He was like, "Cause I would have did the same thing. So I would have said the same thing to you. Like, nah, you dead wrong for that. I was like, oh, okay. So <laughs> therefore, this is where we going. But I think that that is important that everybody. I don't know. I just feel that I'm in a season in my life where I just feel like the male voice is just important and it needs to be heard. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of the times we have not allowed black men to speak. And I think we are in a time right exactly. now and this is, where black men need to speak this, and, and, and we need to allow them to be the lead, to be the head to be the strength, to be all of that, that they need to be. We need to allow it because in this day and age, when I keep hearing protect black women, protect black men, that means that we got to have each other's back. And the only exactly. way how we, yeah. And the only way how we're going to be able to do that, somebody got to listen to the black man voice. Yeah. 
and again, this is why, you know, it just became clear, like, this was something that, you know, maybe I needed to go through things that I went through, you know, to, to lead me to this point, you know, that's just a part of my path, you know. Yeah, this is a movement. I'm happy. I'm, I'm, definitely a movement. I am definitely um, excited. Um, Donnie said he's happy to see that I got you, his brother, here tonight. He says salute. Thank you. Thank um, you. Thank you. Salute. And I am definitely happy that you came on. Um, and um, Elizabeth, because me. this really and truly is a movement. I'm excited to to really watch it fully blossom and fully, it's going to blow. You understand yes. what I'm saying? Um, to see what's going to happen, to see what's going to take place. Um, I believe that there are going to be even, even if they're not fathers, you're going to have a lot of young men coming to you that have gone through situations with their fathers that are going to come for understanding. They're going to come, they're going to come for clarity. And also and ways in what, which for reconciliation. Mm -hmm. that's, that's when it, that's when the changing is going to start. You know, like once we start reaching you know, down to, to the to the young ones and pulling them up, you know what I mean? Like it's like that pyramid thing, man. Like you know, you got one man at top on, on top. You know what I mean? But you got that one man teaching this one and that one and this one and that one and this one and that one. Then they're going to go off and teach the masses. You know, and we're going to see that change eventually. You know, God willing, we'll see it. You know, so. Like Whoa. I said, this is a movement. It's the beginning of a movement. Anytime y'all want to come on here, whatever, um, Elizabeth, you are free reign to come on, talk about publishing, talk about all that, everything good. Um, talk about the movement, talk about the movie, uh, whatever y'all want to talk about. Y'all have free reign, contact me in, at any point in time and be like, listen, we want to come, we want to do this. I have not a problem with it whatsoever. Um, y'all got my full support. I think Thank that you. this is. I really and truly you, do think you, that this is you, great. You are now. You are now a part of this. You're now a part right. of this. You know, you're getting this. you getting this word out, man. You helping us get this word out. You I know, think so. I, it is just so. It, it it just. It's very important to me um, that we empower our young black men and our black men as a whole. I agree. Come on, Elizabeth, and agree. Elizabeth said, "I agree." Yeah, yeah. I definitely <laughs> agree, and not only. And I, and I say this with Justin all the time, not only the black men, but it helps the black women, the black girls who have grown up without a dad. Because like I said, I blame myself. Like, did I do something wrong? Did he not want me? But then I just had to realize, like, especially after reading Justin's book, if a father wants to fight, he's going to fight. Period. So, you know, it's not about they can come up with a million excuses because his family was trying to come up with excuses and stuff. But at the end of the day, I see what a father who fights for their child does after reading that book. So it almost gave me closure, honestly. And just realizing that, you know, um, it just gave me closure in realizing that, um, you know, just stop really thinking about it because it's always shoulda, coulda, woulda, you know. But now I know that, like, if he wanted to do it, he could have. So it almost gave me closure in a little bit by reading it. And I will say this, right? Like with my biological father, so six months after I, I, I officially met him in my 20s, he passed away, he died. And right. one of the things that I always, I had carried mm, for a little bit after his death, probably for about two years, um, was the fact that he died not knowing that I actually loved him, right? Regardless of what happened, he was still my biological father. And without him, I just would not be here. And right. there were, there were like, there were, there literally were mitigating circumstances, although to me they were, they uh, sound like, you know, excuses, but um, there were mitigating circumstances that prevented him from being able to do what he right. really and truly wanted to do, right? right. And then I then had to resolve and all, all jokes, I had to resolve it within myself that, especially right. when I met my other two sisters by him, through him, that okay he loved them so he couldn't have possibly not loved me but he just might not have had the willpower or the fight in him to do what he did for them for me yes exactly you know what i'm saying and at that point i was able to forgive him for not being there um and then also release myself from the anger of him not being there right right and that's something that it, it takes you know because even like Audra, I, I listen girl i ain't gonna lie to you um her, her connection fell off but with me reading this it 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 um 
it solidified a lot of the conclusions that I came to at a young age, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to help me kind of like try to cope with the fact that he wasn't there. And I had yeah. and, and reading this, I was like, you know what? Because I had always said growing up, well, if he wanted to be here, he would be here. And I was like, you know, and, and yeah. for me, that was that was the reality. You know what I'm saying? If he yeah. wanted to be here, he would be here. And that still is the reality, because at the end of the day, it after is. after after I reached a certain age, he still he still could have. Mm -hmm. But what I had to do, I had to realize that. Due to his limitations, I can't hold his limitations against him. Yeah. And so I would no longer be angry with him for not. Yeah. And, and I, you know, I kind of touched on that in a book, too, about letting go of anger. Mm -hmm. You know, because you did. it can bog you down. It, it can bog you down, man. Like, you know, and then, you know, what type of father would I be if I'm holding on anger, you know, from my own father? And I still do, like, you know, I struggle with it, you know, just letting go of it sometimes because I know how hard it was. And I know you touched on, like, you know, uh, when I talked to you, you know, I told you I cried at my graduation, you know, um, you know, I cried because it was a struggle. It was a struggle. You know, I know the struggle that we came through, man. places that we, you know, we lived that, you know, weren't always the best, you know what I mean? Um, and the thing, like, it, it was, it was a couple different reasons why I cried, you know, like my father came to graduation, but, um, you know, he came, you know, he didn't come empty handed, like he came with a stack of pictures. I think I might've told you, he came with a stack of pictures like mm -hmm. this, you know, and, uh, you know, in these pictures, you know, like, I love you to death, dad, but like, you know, I didn't want to see those pictures, man. You know, pictures of you with your family, you know, and, you know, your new family, you know, uh, and your house, you know, your house was huge, you know, like you got the boat and the swimming pool, the in-ground swimming pool with the wraparound slide. Like, I don't want to see any of that, man. You know, our right. life was off last week. Like, what makes you think that we want to see this? You know, it hurt, you know what I mean? And he didn't even understand. Like, he asked me, well, why are you crying? With a straight face. And I told him, like, man, you just... Just what's that? Like, I don't know if you even understand. I, I really don't know, but you know, just him asking me that question. Like, I just, you know, kind of just felt like he might have been like just like a, oblivious, you know, like, I, I don't know. Do you yeah, think he understands me. today? I don't know. Mm. I don't know. But that's, you know, that's a different conversation. You know, um, I'll just play volume three. Come on, volume three. <laughs> <laughs> well, Donnie said relaunch book signing, empowerment brunch, etc. Gallery 603. Hey, I'm with it, man. I'm with it. I'm with it. You know, I told him, I'm gonna talk off. you know, we're gonna talk soon, man. I'm with it, though. I'm down, I'm down for that. That's what's up. I think that'll be good, especially for the, for the Black fathers to have an empowerment brunch. I think that would be Absolutely. what's up. Um, Absolutely. To get the men together talking and being yep. empowered. Um, being right. uplifted, you know what I'm saying, and sharing. Right. But this is um, the beginning. This is where it starts, man. Like it starts with like little things like this. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like little things like this. And this is a this is a little thing. Me taking three years to write a book is a little thing. I mean, compared to the to the bigger picture, because we oh, got to we got to start somewhere, man. You do, and it starts with you putting that pen to that pad, writing it, and then Elizabeth publishing it, That's and right. then and then now. Her pushing the vision of where you're going. Yep. Yep. Like I tell Liz, man, we a team, man. Like I'm not going nowhere else. You know, like we're a team now. We're gonna see it through to the end. You know, we're gonna like make make things happen, you know. Like one door, like I always say, one door, you know, closes. You know, we're gonna blaze through a whole a whole, a whole a whole lot more. You know? So just gotta stay consistent. Consistent and persistent. Period. Period. <laughs> That's it. So I really want to thank you for your time today. I really do. I really thank you for coming on here, thank for you. sharing. Um, if you want to drop the link to where the people can purchase your book from, tell them where they could purchase it at. Okay. Um, um, yeah, the and right how they can available. follow you. Okay. Yeah, the book is uh, available on uh, uh, Amazon, Apple, Barnes & Noble, uh, Walmart now. Uh, the link to Amazon will be in my bio. Uh, you guys can uh, click click in my bio on Instagram. You can follow I underscore am underscore Bernard Jacks. That's B-E-R-N-A-R-D-J-A-X. 
and uh, the link will be right in that bio. And you know, feel free to look at my page, man. You can look at some of the uh, some of the edits I did uh, with uh, me and my children. You know, um, I actually enjoy doing those too. You know, um, but uh, you know, I underscore am underscore Bernard Jacks, um, and the link will be in the bio. You know, for the Amazon uh, Amazon link to get to the book, but it's available on all platforms right now. And That's don't forget to follow Black Fathers Up. <laughs> <laughs> that is right up there. Follow Black yeah. Fathers Up underscore the movement on Instagram. Definitely do. Um, like I said earlier, and I'm going to keep saying it, I think that it is imperative for uh, women and men alike uh, to read this book, to read A Father's Plight. Um, I think that it will give us great, it gives great insight for volume one. I can't wait for volume two and three. Um, because I'm volume two right now. <laughs> yeah, good. Will it be out by later this year? It won't be, you know, and that's, oh, okay. that's the reason why I don't, that's the reason why I don't submit, you know, my work, you know, uh, when I when I'm halfway done because I want to take my time and make sure that I'm getting all my feel. I don't like to feel rushed, you know. Like these are uh, some real jewels that I'm dropping in. Like you know, they, 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 I guess you can call them Easter eggs. You know, when you read through the book once, you might not get it. You know, these are things where you might be doing something in your life. You know, you might be in a store somewhere and something might happen. And, you know, it'll be like an instance that you're in and you'll say, well, damn, like this is what that book was talking about. You know, like this is the same type of thing. You know what I mean? So these are these are lifelong messages that are being sent in this book, you know. Um, and like I said, you know, some of you might pick up on it right away. Some might not. You know, some it might take you to go through a certain situation. Like, damn, I was just reading this in this book, you know. Mm -hmm. but, um, you know, it's definitely real. And it, like I said, it, it's definitely, you know, me laying it out on the line man, to help empower, you know, men and women alike. Listen, and that's what we're here for. So like I said, this platform is always open for whenever you want to come back, Thank push you. whatever you want to push um, as far as movies, as far as the next book, as far as whatever the next project, as far as even if, um, even if it's for your event, a book launch, mm -hmm men's brunch, whatever you, whatever, whatever it is that you want to do in order to, I, I, I just feel that now is the time that we truly invest in the black male voice. So yeah. this platform is definitely open. Um, like I said, whatever day, it don't always have to be on a Wednesday, Thursday, whatever the case may be. Uh, this platform is open because I think that um, it's time now for, for us to do something. It is. It is. Um, so, with that being said, y'all, give it up for Mr. Jackson here, thank the father's you, plight. You, I want everyone to truly um, go out and support and, and, and buy the book um, because it literally, as it says in the book, it's a memoir about the adversities of fatherhood. And I think um, a lot of us will learn um, a lot from reading this book. Um, a lot of us might even understand why our fathers fought so hard. And we might even begin to understand why some of them fought so little. Um, it'll just give it, it'll give a certain level of clarity um, in 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 all things and for all things. And so, thank you again. Tell thank Elizabeth, you. I truly appreciate her, um, for, her for her time today. And I will definitely be um, be in contact with the both of y'all. I will definitely maintain contact with the both of y'all. Okay. Um, yes, I think I have an idea about something, so I think it'll be okay. dope. So, okay. yes. All right, y'all. Right. This is it. The Muzzle is Off podcast. We are signing off from here. Um, Thank we you. Will not Thank you. You are welcome. We will be back next week, Wednesday, uh, for another fiery topic. Again, like I said, I, I've just been really focused on the Black male voice. So, um, y'all be tuned in for next week, Wednesday. I think it's, 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 it's going to be different. So, uh, tune in. <laughs> next week, Wednesday at 7 p.m. to the Muzzles of Podcast. And then next week, Friday, we are bringing the male panel back next week, Friday. We are bringing the men back in a panel. It'll be kind of after darkish. Y'all know Muzzles of Podcast goes after dark, which means we talk everything real raw and uncut. Even though we uncut at like the 7 p.m. hour, but y'all know at the 9 p.m. hour is super uncut. So come back next Friday, 9 p.m. for the men. And then next week, Wednesday, 
I don't know what's gonna happen. It's, it's gonna be different. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just putting it out there now. Next week Wednesday, next week Wednesday at seven p.m. It might be a little after darkish. It might have a little after dark type, 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 type feel to it. I'm just gonna put that out there now. So I just want to prepare everybody's mind. If y'all thought last night was crazy, I just, I, I just feel next week is <laughs> it's gonna be bananas as well. So. Once again, thank everybody for tuning in on this special Thursday for this special, special, special broadcast of the Muzzles of Podcast with Justin Jackson and with Elizabeth Roberts. I thank y'all. I appreciate y'all. Please uh, definitely follow Justin on Instagram, Black Fathers Up underscore the movement and I underscore am underscore Bernard JX on um, Instagram to keep up with exactly. everything. J-A-X. J-A-X. Damn it. Why you ain't telling me that before I wrote this? Oh. I thought I spelled that. Did I spell it? You might have. It might. It, 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 it might have been me. And you know what yeah, happened? J A X. Look, and I can't even delete it. J A X. I am. It's all right, y'all. Don't mind me. Boom. There we go. Follow. Justin Jackson at I am Bernard J A X on Instagram to keep up and keep in tune with everything that he has going on. All right. So we are signing off for now and we will catch y'all next week. Have a good night, Thank everybody, you. and stay safe.